Здравствуйте, дорогие коллеги, хочу Dear colleagues, my presentation will recap on what Alexander Emelianov told us about his work on transgene models of zebrafish. And uh, when Alexander Vasilievich came along and he told us about those genes and that model, an idea crossed our mind to see what kind of genes are those back then. And since long way back, we have been working on the hypothesis of Andrei Kozlov on the positive role, potential positive role of tumor in evolution, and we decided to uh, study those genes. In order to start, I'll reiterate this hypothesis of Andrei Kozlov and those main bullet points I'm relying upon in my work. Uh, so hereditary tumors at early stages of progression or hereditary benign tumors were the source of extra cell masses, which could be used in evolution of multicellular organisms for the expression of new novel genes, for the origin of those new differentiated cells types with novel functions uh, and we heard repeatedly that a tumor can provide those genes such an opportunity it gives these them the place the location and if those novel genes are expressed maybe we'll obtain new types of differentiated cells uh, which will possess new functions uh, and maybe some new structures will evolve from that and maybe they will even turn into some organs. We heard lots of examples like that. And so I would like to show you some confirmation of that based on the model, because any hypothesis whatsoever should have an initial model to try it. So I'm going to show you this picture which describes uh, uh, this model upon which Alexander Vasilich was working and uh, when we heard, uh, as we heard in, from the presentation, uh, it's a transgenic model um, when cancerous gene is added in the dual transgene uh, fish, they develop a hepatic tumor. When they remove the hepatostone, there is the regression of the tumor. Here we can see this in the schematic. Uh, you can see all those grades, normal liver, hyperplasia, and then it's hepatic cell carcinoma. If at this stage a uh, cancerous gene was removed uh, uh, from the medium we observed the tumor regression, in order to anal analyze those cells transcriptomas, we made uh, Analysis of transcriptomes are the stages of normal liver carcinoma, hepatic cell carcinoma, and regressed liver stage. And in this slide, you can see the diagram of the uh, schematic of the entire study. Alexander told us about 1,500 genes which were activated but never switched on. And we started working with those activated genes. In our work, we didn't use all those 1,500 of those, but about 900 genes. First of all, because of the genome rotation, uh, some uh, uh, genes were just not found, and all the genes uh, uh, were actually protein coding. So we were working with 870 genes. Major idea was to uh, check the age of those genes. Are they evolutionally novel? We already know that these are they are tumor specific. They were activated in the tumor, but in norm they didn't work. So we supported uh, one moment by hypothesis, but we wanted to see the age of those genes. For that, we use different algorithms. And uh, sometimes we were just relying on blast. Some were more sophisticated, like OMA. That is the approach which enables us 
uh, to come up with a precise genealogy. There are two directions. First, orphology is fine, and then uh, there is a conform or not conform. It. So they go backwards. It's more precise information. Uh, f- more than 50% of those genes, 409, are evolutionally novel in relation to muscles. Uh, that is in uh, genome of muscles, such so genes are not present, present. Then we started analyzing the situation, whether those genes are present in human genome. If they appeared a short while ago, were they fixed in evolutional history of human beings and what happened to them? And we found out that one the third of those genes has got orthologist in human genome, and subsequently the work was related to studying their functions. Uh, uh, we have a model, genes evolve, and they are retained all the way up to humans. Oh, before humans, it would be interesting to see what is the trajectory of evolvement of the function. And back then, there already existed such a resource as gene ontology, uh, which was developed on Drosophila first, and then it was extrapolated onto all the living organisms uh, as uh, human beings and danium are uh, model objects. So there were lots of data on those mechanisms, and we wouldn't say that gene ontology uh, is not typical for them. It's well characterized for them as well. I'll get back to this slide uh, because this is about the entire schematic of my work. And then I'll show you several stages we included into our work. First stage, the confirmation of expression. Uh, we've demonstrated that there are some evolutional novel genes and we were based on the data of deep sequencing. But any sequencing, sequences, transcri- transcriptome sequencing is statistical method, so it's better to be confirmed experimentally. And so now uh, we used RAS-T PCR and we analyzed the, the sample of genes from our list and we've demonstrated that T, uh, and T1 is a tumor, there is seminoma and hepatic cell carcinoma. It's not fish from the model, it's just fish with the tumor. It's like controls group for expression. There were hepatic uh, uh, tumors and normal liver. And we demonstrated that these genes were tumor specific. They are not working in the fish in normal conditions. Then we passed over to the analysis of gene ontology of these genes, the genes that are evolutionary novel, and showed that we found out a very interesting thing. These genes uh, appeared in a fish, and they were very simple, practically no functions in accordance with GEO. There were some molecular functions. The analysis of their orthologs showed that in human beings, these genes acquire functions or evolve. The formation of a gene means uh, uh, formation in a genome. But if the gene is formed in a genome and it is not working, we can consider it to be a, a full-fledged gene. It has no function, and most probably it will be lost. But if it acquires a function, it uh, will stay there. In fish, the majority of these uh, genes have very simple molecular functions since they just expressed. If something is expressed, it is being uh, integrated into the network. There is a product of the gene, it exists in the cell, and it can perform uh, some function. Usually all new genes have functions in connection with the DNA functions, so something simple like this. In the orthologs of these genes, these are the orthologs of the evolutionary novel genes. And they have many functions connected with the, the development of some anatomical structures. Various growth and development processes. For example, 
if we compare 52 versus 21, it's a comparison of the functions of genes and their orthologs. Whether it is clear or not, I uh, may say that this slide shows that the human orthologs have very important functions, no such important functions in the fish. So what we see is that a gene was formed and then it acquired a function. Well, this slide is more interesting and it confirms the previous one. You see a list of functions in which these genes take part. These are the functions that um, the fish do not have them. They do not have such organs uh, at all. Uh, these functions are connected with the development of the lungs, the development of placenta. When these genes were formed in a fish and then were preserved during the course of the evolution, they were integrated into very serious morphogenetic networks and started executing very interesting and important functions. Certainly, not all the genes of the list behave the same. And this is only a model, and we see that this model is uh, does not match uh, our hypothesis 100% because it is malignant. But we have simulated the possibility to track the trajectory of the function acquisition. We show that the genes are formed in the tumor. The tumors start expressing or start working. Then they acquire the function. They are preserved uh, within the evolution uh, up to the human being. And in a human being, they acquire their function. Next stage of our work, we see that evolutionary novel genes are expressed in the tumor. And these genes that were preserved in a human being, where do they express? We have checked this using the panels and shown that in the majority of cases these genes are working in normal conditions, not in the tumor. So in fact, the function was specialized. The genes acquired functions in specific organs and they were not working in the tumors. First and foremost, this was uh, uh, substantiated by the uh, reverse links. In the beginning, the genes that were discovered by Alexander Vasilyevich, we assumed that probably they didn't have regulatory back link, uh, connections. They were activated, but they couldn't switch uh, off because all the genes that were older, they have these back connections. Well, these genes didn't have them, and they couldn't switch off. And that's why we detected them. So when we speak about these genes orthologs in a human being, they already have these back connections. These are ordinary important genes that uh, execute uh, important morphogenetic functions. We're interested, uh, well, not only morphogenetic, by the way, but we paid uh, more attention to these functions. That's a confirmation of our hypothesis. And some fresh data, we have analyzed the transcriptomes of another similar model, which Alexander uh, Vasilyevich mentioned, but the oncogene was different. But also the tumor is activated, and we analyzed the transcriptomes. And this slide shows on the left in blue. We have checked the genes. We had 870 genes uh, that we were studying, and we checked whether they were expressed in norm in this model prior to tumor activation, and have shown that 539 genes were not expressed in norm or in normal tissues. But then we checked uh, their expression in the tumors, and out of those that are not expressed in normal tissues, very few were activated in the tumor. 
we even assumed that it would be like this because the search engine process when new genes are activated in the tumor is uh, stochastic. In one model, these genes were activated. In another model, this region was not much demethylated, and hence these genes were not activated at all. But they were not present in uh, normal tissues. That's a very important confirmation. And we move differently and next. We checked which genes were activated in this model, and we identified the genes that were activated in this model. 847 genes in all. Out of them, a large share of evolutionary novel genes and other genes that have orthologs in the human beings, not all of them. 176 uh, did have orthologs. Some were lost during the evolution, not during the search. This slide is quite busy, but uh, out of those evolutionary novel and human specific for this model, there are some that acquire important morphogenetic functions in human beings. Certainly, we have to study each gene in detail. There may be various exceptions, but in the general picture, we see that the genes that were activated in this model as very simple ones, not working ones so with no back uh, links. They have acquired some function in a human being. And in natural conditions, uh, things uh, might have developed uh, in a similar way. The model actually is needed to show the possibility of a process, which we did. And these results, hopefully, will be published in the near future. At least we already uh, submitted it to the press. Uh, these are the conclusions, but I've already told them. And great thanks to all the colleagues. There's uh, one uh, of our staff missing from the picture, Andrei Makashov, but you've seen him today because he was the speaker as well. I think you have no questions in terms of the model because Alexander Vasilievich told everything in detail. That's it. Thank you. It's open for a question. What is uh, the meaning uh, of the word function when you speak about functions? The simple meaning is uh, the back connection. If the gene f uh, executes something and it is regulated, it is a function to a certain extent, a feature, a feature. We divide functions into two components. There are molecular functions, and there are uh, body functions. It's a kind of a grading. Molecular function means that gene interacts with something and gives rise to a certain response. And if the same gene fulfills the same function in some complicated in the manifestation of some complicated morphogenetic sign, for example, development of a lung, this will be a body function or organism function. Molecular functions are performed by all the genes present in the cell. If the gene has a product, it means it interacts with something. May I provide a comment straight away? Not long ago, there was a very active discussion about the functions and non-functions in connection with the consortium, the name of which I forgot. Considered the genome transcription and found out that 80% of genes are transcribed. And 8% of genes were functional. Well, the genetic data gave only 5% of 
functionable genes. All the rest was uh, trash. And there was a large discussion in terms of this. And the result of it, the following definition of a function uh, came onto stage. That's something that can be selected or counter-selected in the course of evolution. It is either useful or harmful. When from this point of view they've calculated, it turned out that 5% was uh, true, 5% of genes. All the rest, and you define is it as molecular functions, but I would like this borderline to be understandable. When I speak about the back uh, links, I mean the same as you've said. My comment is as follows. In a gene ontology, this is a resource that many people call a revolution in biology that allows And there are three types of functions, molecular, uh, cellular, and uh, organism functions. Organism functions are everything involved in development. So approximately what Katya said. In the cybernetics book, Wiener gives a definition. Everything that is a function uh, is regulated. Everything that is regulated is a function. But this is Wiener, the founder. And this is important to us, extremely important. The growth, the complication becomes higher, but it is not connected with selective advantage. It is not quite clear then what uh, this uh, increase in complexity means. And uh, the morphologists, the evolutionists start discussing that the complexity growth may be uh, uh, not selective. But afterwards, the function may appear. So I think that the term and the word function, they will have uh, physiology as a science that exists for two or three hundred years. But nevertheless, the term function continues to evolve. That's really so. The fact that genome is transcribed 90% or more, but it is transcribed based on the uh, overall uh, transcribed cells. You probably quote NCOP. The consortium's name is NCOP. Out of the mic. What is interesting, ENCODE was uh, made on the basis of uh, transformed uh, cells. And that such a large percent is uh, transcribed in the tumors, that's quite clear. They are tumors. We argue about functions uh, using a model that has lost its functions. But this is a central question, including the oncology. It has to be discussed and thought over, because what we mentioned before, if it becomes true, We'll have to treat the functions at the end of the day, these uh, back connections. Can you please uh, explain that this new genes were in some simpler organisms. Uh, we have checked the simpler. Uh, for example, in the limprey, accidentally, these genes uh, were not, we thought that they were accidentally not present in the limpreys, but uh, might have been in the simpler organisms, and we checked. So they were present there. The progenitor fish and human being. So, their common progenitor or predecessor uh, was not the same all the time. That's why part of the genes were inherited by the human beings, uh, the same as by the fish. Um, 
I guess that concludes our uh, symposium. Let's give all the speakers a final round of applause. <laughs>